There's no questioning that Elon Musk is the face of SpaceX, but for a company to achieve some of the world's most groundbreaking technologies in the aerospace industry, it certainly had some of the most brilliant minds working behind the scenes. And one of these unsung heroes is none other than Thomas Muller, one of the SpaceX pioneers widely credited for revolutionizing the company's engineering department. So who was he, and why is he not at SpaceX today? On November 30th of 2020, Thomas Muller officially said goodbye to SpaceX. In an emotional tweet, he wrote, I retired from SpaceX SpaceX today. Thank you, Elon Musk. It was quite a ride. To which Elon Musk warmly responded, Thanks for everything you did to help build SpaceX. Some of the best memories ever. It's clear that Musk and Muller had a warm relationship even towards the end. But if we want to talk about Muller's amazing contributions to SpaceX, let's have a little background on Muller's history, shall we? You see, from a young age, Thomas Muller loved technology more than anything else in the world. By the time he was 11, he was so good at fixing stuff that he had even repaired a broken clock and a lawnmower at home. As Muller grew older, he found himself immersed in modeling rockets. For example, he fell in love with the famous Estes model, and by the age of 12, he had even designed a model of the space shuttle. By junior high, he had designed a rocket using his dad's oxyacetylene machine. To prevent the model from overheating, Muller used a coffee can to cool it. The engine model was such a marvel in his local rural community that he ended up bagging several science competitions with it. Once he was done with college, Muller briefly followed in his father's footsteps and started working as a logger to raise money for his studies. He then enrolled at the University University of Idaho to pursue a degree in mechanical engineering. Muller was such a great student that he easily excelled in all his tests and emerged the standout student in his class. Once he was done with his degree, he received several job offers from Idaho and Oregon to practice as an engineer. But Muller was determined to make it big in what was then the aerospace hub of the United States, California. Here he landed a job with Hughes Aircraft, a manufacturing company that specialized in manufacturing satellites. And while the company didn't manufacture rockets, Muller enjoyed his job because it was still in the field of aerospace engineering. Shortly after his stint with Hughes Aircraft, Muller joined TRW Inc., where he began working on some of his first liquid-fueled rocket engines. In fact, he was the brains behind one of the most powerful hydrogen-fueled rockets of the early 90s, the TR-106 engine. While working for TRW, Muller pursued his master's degree in mechanical engineering. He graduated in 1992 from Loyola Marymount University. This made Muller one of the most respected engineers in the entire field. A naturally creative mind, Muller would find himself constantly pitching new ideas to improve the engines at the company. Unfortunately, he felt that most of his groundbreaking ideas were not being taken seriously at a corporation as diversified as TRW. But little did Muller know that he would soon cross paths with Elon Musk, who would give him all the creative freedom he needed at SpaceX. So during his spare time, he would find himself building his own engines. He would also meet up with some of the members of a young experimental rocket group known as Reaction Research Society. Here, Muller would showcase his engines to airframes and would have them launched at an RRS base located in the Mojave Desert. Within a year, Muller became a popular member of the RRS and was technically sound enough to build pretty advanced working engines all by himself. Through the 90s, Muller worked on next-gen engines and gained a lot of fame and success in the aerospace industry. By the end of 2001, he had constructed a groundbreaking liquid-propelled engine in his garage. In 2002, Muller managed to successfully test-fire this new engine, making him the undisputed king of rocket technology in North America at the time. Of course, Muller's impressive feat of being able to launch a 36-kilogram rocket with 58 kilonewtons of thrust did not go unnoticed. It caught the attention of a 31-year-old multimillionaire known as Elon Musk, who at the time was looking to invest heavily in the aerospace industry. With the help of another aerospace engineer, Jim Cantrell, Musk met up with Muller's amateur group in a warehouse that Muller was using to build and test rockets. Musk was so impressed with Muller's knowledge of advanced rocket engineering that he knew he had to have him on his team if he was to make SpaceX successful. And that's how Muller became one of the founding members of SpaceX, and later turned out to be the most valuable asset to the company. What's interesting about Musk's and Muller's relationship was that other companies tried to hire Muller during the early years of SpaceX, but none of them succeeded. Muller was clearly hooked by Musk and all the potential that SpaceX would have in the near future. Muller began working in the engineering department of SpaceX in 2002. For nearly 20 years, he developed some of SpaceX's most impressive rocket engines from scratch. For example, Muller helped SpaceX develop the Falcon 1 Kestrel engine, the Falcon 9, and the Falcon Heavy Merlin engine. Muller's most notable achievement in SpaceX was developing developing the Falcon 9's Merlin engine, which is still in operation to this day. The rocket was a huge success, mainly because of its dependency on liquid oxygen and rocket-grade kerosene as fuel, a project that Muller spent countless hours perfecting. The Falcon 9 first stage booster featured nine Merlin 1D engines that enabled the rocket to produce over 1.7 million pounds of thrust, which was revolutionary at the time. We might be impressed by the Starship now, but in its heyday, the Falcon 9 rocket was the talk of the town. It was one of the first rockets that was capable of launching 
launching payloads to orbit and then landing on an autonomous drone ship in the sea. Muller later went on to develop the first orbital class rockets that were capable of returning from space for reusability. With Muller's guiding hand as the propulsion chief technology officer, SpaceX was able to launch the Falcon 9 rocket successfully over 100 times. Indeed, Muller's contributions to the Falcon 9 rocket ushered in a new era in spaceflight technology. It marked the return of human spaceflight capabilities to the United States. Not only that, SpaceX's cooperation with NASA marked the first time that NASA launched humans to space since the space shuttle was grounded in 2011. It was the Falcon 9 that delivered NASA astronauts to the International Space Station aboard the Crew Dragon spacecraft for the first time in May of 2020. Another notable achievement by Muller was his involvement in developing the Draco and Raptor engines. In fact, he was even involved in the naming of these engines. In an early 2010 interview, Muller went into detail as to how the Raptor, Draco, and Colonel names came to be realized. He said, When we first started SpaceX, we just called our booster engine the 60K engine. But after we started running it, Elon told me to come up with a name for it that wasn't numbers and letters like RD-180 or RS-68. One of the people working on the turbo pump from Barbara Nichols was a falconer, and she suggested we name it after a falcon. I thought that sounded good, so I asked her what are some falcon names. She named off a bunch, and I can't recall them all, but I do remember that the Kestrel is the small one, the Merlin is a medium-sized falcon, and the Peregrine and Gyra falcon are large falcons. I thought, great, we'll name the small second-stage engine Kestrel and the medium-sized engine the Merlin. I knew we would develop bigger engines in the future, so I planned to reserve Peregrine for later. Elon liked the naming, so it stayed. Years later, we started work on a staged combustion engine which was a different type than Merlin, so I was thinking along the lines of Eagle or something. I eventually came up with Raptor, which is a general definition of birds of prey including eagles, hawks, falcons, and owls. No, it's not named after a dinosaur. That was accepted as the name of the engines for BFR. After the first version of the Raptor engine was test-fired in 2016, Muller decided to step back and get a part-time role in the company. In January of 2019, he became a senior advisor of the SpaceX propulsion team working on the Raptor engines before officially retiring in November of 2020. And there's no denying that Muller left SpaceX in a dominant position. Today, Muller is enjoying the fruits of his retirement. During his spare time, he loves to recall some of his great achievements as a young engineer working in the aerospace industry. For example, just before he retired, he went on Twitter to talk about a rocket engine he worked on in 1992. This rocket engine would later become the foundation for SpaceX's BFR more than 10 years later. He wrote, The last amateur liquid rocket I worked on was the 10K engine, later known by all of us as BFR. I started this in about 1992 and still wasn't finished 10 years later. This engine should produce about 12,000 pounds of thrust burning LOX kerosene. In another tweet, he added, John Garvey was a main contributor. He paid for the construction of the propellant tanks and we used his shop to construct the rocket. This was as far as the build got. About the time this pick was taken, I met Elon. Once we started SpaceX, all work on BFR stopped. Muller is 59 years old now and there's no denying all he's done for SpaceX. He might just go down in history as one of the greatest aerospace engineers of all time. Who knows, he might even have a street in a future city on Mars named after him. Well, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, welcome to the future.